Welcome to Turnchapel Wharf, where behind me is the brand new Princess F65, and we have been given the world's first opportunity to take it out for a sea trial. It's just the right, whoa, there we go. Right, I'm gonna ease back. Now, the boat made its debut at the Southampton Boat Show in September. It's now early December, and this is one of the very first production boats ready to go. And you can see what a fine looking thing she is. Really attractive styling. It's a little bit more fluid, a bit sportier than previous iterations like the F62. And it just looks very elegant lovely looking craft. So let's drop down and take a closer look. We've already done a tour of the boat at Southampton so we may or may not get a chance to have a look around it all but if we don't you can see it all from our Southampton walkthrough. But the point of this is the opportunity to get out on the water, put it through its paces, see how it performs, give you some speed figures, some fuel figures and really get a flavour of what it's like to actually drive. So the guys are just taking off some of the covers as we speak. We're gonna warm up the engines, head out to sea, and really see what she can do. Now this gives you some idea of the scale. It is quite a tall boat, but thanks to that styling, it really doesn't look it, but I'll show you, just give you an idea of how tall that is. I'm standing on the pontoon, you can see that these side decks are just above head height. And look at the size of these windows in the hull, really good and big. Now the retail price of this, including VAT and a fistful of extras, is gonna be just over three million pounds. But you'll get an idea of what that money buys you. So at the stern here, we've got a big hydraulic bathing platform that will take up to a Williams 345 and that drops right down into the water. You can see there's a bathing ladder that pulls out of the side there. There's lots going on at the stern here. We've got pull out shower and controls for the shower just there. There's this lovely little bench here with a window into the crew cabin. We've got a little opening slot for the shore power cable you can see going in there. We've got a passerelle, slides out of there to give access to a key if you're more stern two in the med. We've got this big pantograph style door giving access down into the crew cabin. Uh, it's not fully kitted out at the moment. This is still very much in the pre preparation phase, but you can see we've got one bunk there. We've got another bunk running that way and then access into the ensuite bathroom. Storage space, lots more storage space. And there's that little window in the transom that I showed you earlier. And then behind here is storage for a pair of sea bobs. Don't know if that's it's just so you can see there are the two mounting brackets for the sea bob. They each slot in there, the special hooks that they hang on and the two charging sockets for them. So dedicated stowage for a pair of sea bobs. Let's jump on board and get going before the light starts to fade. We'll just do a quick tour of the side decks while we're here. You can see that these are nicely flared out, gives you a little bit of extra room just to maneuver along. There's this lovely blue strip in the superstructure and a grab rail up here, so there's always something to hang on to when you're walking down the side deck. Get a scale of these big windows down the sides. And up onto the foredeck. Now, this is all covered up for the sea trial. This is a retail boat. So 
they're keen to keep it all protected and we're not really going to get a feel for this on a December day down in Plymouth but you get the idea again look at the Southampton show report but you can see the wrap of seating here the sunbeds and that lovely little coffee table there huge windscreens big old storage bins on either side perfect for fenders and covers and the like and even the Look at these cleats, beautifully done with the curved stainless steel, just protecting the gel coat. And again, back down the starboard deck, down into the cockpit. So here are the two MAN 1200 horsepower engines. They're on straight shafts, tucked away under the cockpit in the saloon. You can see the hatch giving access to those. They're fired up and we're ready to go. Casting off, you can see the bow thruster pushing us out and indeed the stern thruster, this boat is fitted with both, that just gives us the opportunity just to ease out sideways from this berth and makes the whole berthing and departure process that much easier. Our test skipper is just taking us out. He knows the area. You can see he's got one camera showing the stern of the boat. And there are those two thrusters just pushing us around. And now, as we come out into clear water, put them both ahead. And we are off out to sea. Just easing out through the harbour. We've got MDL's Queen Anne Battery Marina to starboard. The barracks up on the hill. And then Mount Batten over to port. While we're easing our way out of the harbour, I just thought I'd give you an idea of what it's like inside. So we're now cruising along at displacement speed, probably about eight, nine knots, and you can get an idea of just how quiet it is in here. So the engines are more or less under my feet. They're down here, but it's obviously extremely well insulated down there because there's a very slight murmur, but not much else at all. Just the slightest of vibrations under my feet, but you can easily have a conversation in here at this speed, and it's wonderfully stable. You can see we've got all the sort of scatter cushions and so on. So I'll just give you a very quick run through the boat just to remind you what it looks like. But you're better off looking at our walk around tour from the Southampton show where the whole boat was dressed. But you can get an idea of the, the spaces here, the size of these lovely windows. You can just see the subtle under lighting on the sofas. We've got Venetian blinds all around these windows. So you can barely see them until you get up close, but you can see that those will all close up and what a great view from down here. So this is the helm station. I'll give you an idea of what it's like to drive in a minute but just get a feeling of what it's like to sit here at the helm. That's the view out. There's a little bit of obstruction from this mullion here and a little bit from the central one but it's still a pretty fine view. And of course you have got this lovely side door here. So we might just see if we can open that. You can see that has a proper seal on it, but you can push that open. And again, that's a really lovely feature to be able to sit at the helm with the door open underway. You've got a lovely fresh breeze coming in here. It obviously means you can very easily lean out to look down the decks or Ask your crew to pull out the fenders. But what a glorious view. Just pull that shut again. And I think I need two hands to do that. 
So when you hold it shut, it then automatically seals it like that. So quick look around the helm station. We've got those, uh, no, <laughs> the thrusters there, that's just the thruster cover. Got an adjustable wheel. Can't find the actual lever for that, but that adjusts for height. And then we've got twin screens. You can see we've got the camera on this one and this lovely spot next to the helm with that pull-out table. And let's have a quick look down in the cabins while we're motoring along, get an idea of how quiet it is down here. So if we drop back down, let's go into the main master cabin. And again, given that this is the closest cabin to the engines, it's still really very civilized in here. Just the slightest of whines from those two big man engines. But what a lovely view. You could very easily cruise along at displacement speed whilst you are down here. So here's this lobby with access to the ensuite bathroom. Keep those closed while we're underway. This is the walk in wardrobe area. Not going to give you the full tour, but just give you a flavour. Let's go forward into the VIP, see what it sounds like in there. Now, of course, we're a bit further from the engines here, so you don't get the engine noise, but you do get a little bit of hull noise if I just keep quiet for a bit. probably just here, a little bit of slap from those chines. It's a little bit of a chop outside, not much. But again, lovely space, big bed, beautiful lighting, lots of nice detail. There's the ensuite bathroom in there. And then there are two more cabins. There's one over here to starboard, and that's the twin. And this is the cabin that has dual access to the bathroom. So you can see there is ensuite access from here into the bathroom, but there is also access from that lobby area. So you can see I've just done a complete circuit of that. So this is the bathroom that gets used as the day heads, and I close that up. You can see there's the loo, so you can lock it from either door, but you've got access through there. And then to port, there is this twin bunk cabin. A little bit smaller beds, not quite so much natural light. There is a window there, but the bed does block a bit of it. But you can see that's what you get down there. But This is what's really going to sell it to you. It's this fabulous seating area, lovely aft galley layout. It's the full height fridge freezer, everything you need there, overhead lockers with an extract fan up there. But, and of course, this is the window that opens up and then with the doors pushed over to port, that window open, you have this fantastic connection with the cockpit itself. Okay, I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like to drive from up here. So obviously lovely to have an outdoor flybridge helm position. We've got a big hard top overhead providing lots of shelter and these two pillars supporting it either side, but the wonderful clear view in front of me, all the main controls that we need. I've got the throttles close to hand, We've got an adjustable wheel. You can see the angle of that changes, not reach, just the angle. And then the seats themselves will also slide backwards and forward so you can get closer to it. We've got two big Raymarine screens and then the engine control system right in front of me. Thrusters, VHF, trim tabs, everything we need. So let's knock it into gear. So idle speed, about 600 RPM, we're doing six and a half knots. We'll do the full fuel and speed figures downstairs where it's going to be a little bit warmer. The sun is already starting to set, but I wanted to give you an idea of what it's like to drive from up here. So let's put a few revs on. 
This is a neat touch. Have you seen we've got a weighted central hub? So that's always upright, even when you turn the wheel. And we're a long way from the engines up here, so nice and refined and quiet. Little bit of breeze coming over the windshield, but actually because it's got that reverse angle on it, it actually sends most of it up and over. But let's put some revs on. We've got a bit of a swell out here, so we should get an idea of how that hull copes with the waves. Now, now we're already, you see, we're up to 20 knots and doing just under 1,800 RPM. And actually, it really doesn't feel like 20 knots of breeze coming over, so that windshield is obviously doing its job. Right, let's put a bit of port helm on. Now, you can really feel it riding over that big swell, but it's a very nice controlled motion. We have got the slight and the stabilizers switched on, and they're obviously doing their bit. But let's put it into a turn. Very nice light steering and responsive too. It's immediately turning to port. We've got a little bit of lean on, but I suspect those stabilizers are actually reducing that a bit. But that's not even full lock. We can really wind it on. It's about three turns lock to lock. But look how well that responds. We'll complete the circle. And that's probably only about four boat lengths, I would say. So that's pretty tidy. And Princess are always really good at this, even when they build a big 65-foot flybridge like this. It actually handles very tidily. It's no sports boat, but it is nevertheless a very easy, responsive boat to drive. We'll just put a turn in the other way. You get an idea for that. I'm not going to go the whole way, but just wanted to show you how easily and quickly it responds. Let's do a quick build up of the revs. Might get a bit windy, but we'll do the full set downstairs. But look at that, what fun. So much power at your fingertips and a really competent hull. Look at that. And not a drop of spray up here at all. We're shoving out quite a lot of water either side and riding beautifully over that swell, but it's not uncomfortable, there's no slamming, it's just a good, solid, consistent ride. Whoa, there we go. Right, I'm going to ease back and let's move down the stairs, but that gives you an idea. At 30 knots, it just trances through that wave, no problem at all. Right, let's turn it round, head downstairs and we'll give you an idea of fuel, revs and speed. So we've now come down to the inside helm position just to talk through some of the fuel figures and speeds and so on. But the first thing to notice is it's actually slightly heavier steering from down below. And that's because while the upstairs steering is fly-by-wire, this one is hydraulic. So we've got power assistance for the hydraulic steering but even if there is a problem and we lose the power assistance, we can still use this. We can pump it up by hand and you still get hydraulic steering. Obviously, it's heavier, but it does mean you've got that backup. But that explains why it's a little bit heavier at the helm here. Now, we're in gear when we're just pootling along at six knots. We've had a look. At, I've done a full set of figures and fuel flow and so on. Um, the fuel flow is down here at the moment. We can't get it up on the screen at the moment, but that's just a, a glitch that needs sorting. But when we're just running along at six and a half knots, 600 RPM, it's only burning around 13 litres per hour. So you can see that gives an enormous range when you're just cruising along at displacement speed. Obviously, it's a little bit slower than you're usually going to be running, but it is perfectly possible to do that. And thanks to those slight stabilizers, even with this fairly big swell out here, there's not too much roll at all. But let's 
bring it up to speed, gradually apply the power. So let's just hold it there. So about 1200 RPM. Now this is a really comfortable long range cruising speed. At this speed we're doing 11 knots and burning 94, no, uh, yeah, 94 litres an hour. So again, really comfortable cruising speed. You could cover big miles like this. And of course, because you're still at displacement speed, it's really nice and comfortable. There's no sudden movements or slamming at all. But if we pick it up again, let's get up to planing speed and you can really feel and hear those turbos spooling up now. Just starting to get on the plane. It's a little bit of bow lift, but really nicely controlled. You've got good vision from down here, even when you're coming up over the hump. But now we're on the plane, doing 1700 RPM. We'll just knock it back a tiny bit. So now we're doing 19 knots, 1700 RPM. Just have a quick check on the fuel down here. So that's about 240 liters an hour. But again, really comfortable planing speed. And let's wind it all the way up and see what she'll do flat out. So we're up 2,200. There's a little bit of wind and tide in this direction, but there we are, 2,270 2, RPM. We're doing 30 knots, and at this speed, it's 244 liters per hour per engine, so about 480 all up. But flat out, a solid 31 knots in this direction. In the other direction, it was just over 32. So really good speed, plenty of power. And let's just put it through a tight turn so you can get an idea of even flat out. It's a really controlled turn. Got a bit of a swell out here, but just makes very light work of it. You can see there's just a kind of reassuring amount of lean on that. And actually the heavier steering works quite nicely. It gives you a bit more feedback in some respects. Really good vision, even at this speed. And the engines, yes, you can hear them, but they're very muted. But what's most impressive is how quiet the hull is from here. There's really very little hull noise at all. And even with those engines running at full whack, now we've got the wind and tide more in our favor. We're up to 2,300 RPM. And there we go, kind of 31, 32 knots, very comfortably. Maybe just trim it down a touch. There we go, just bring that down a little bit. And even better vision like that. You could happily cruise all day at that if you can afford the fuel burn. But realistically, any kind of speed over 20 knots is going to cover really good distance without stressing the engines, the boat, or your ears. Just lift that up a little bit now. And there we are, back at 24 knots, 2,000 RPM, and 189 litres per hour per engine. I hope you've enjoyed this sea trial of the brand new Princess F65. It's always an exciting moment to get on board a very new boat like this. And exactly as we'd hoped, it shows all those classic Princess qualities. You've got that lovely accommodation, the very beautiful finish and detailing, albeit in a discreet manner, lots and lots of space, 
a really good layout, but most of all, you've got that classic princess hull. You've got solid 30 knot plus performance. You've got really good agile handling for a boat of its size. And most of all, you've got a confident, comfortable hull that feels really competent, even in quite a big swell that we've been in today. It always feels solid, it always feels reassuring. So thank you very much for watching. Do please let me know what you think about the boat and the video in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.